Welcome, book lovers, to this second very special edition of Storytime, unplugged by myself, Timothy Bateson. Last time I brought you Reaper Man by Terry Pratchett from right here in my living room in Palmer, Alaska. I point that out because a couple of people did ask where I was recording. It's also the same location I make all my audio recordings from. However, there's one difference. You're getting this uncut and unedited. So all the flubs, mistakes, coughs, splutters, lost pages, you're going to see those. Whereas in the audio recordings, I take them out. This is going to be a less professional recording for that reason alone, but I think it makes it more personal and as a result. This time, I've been lucky to bring. Be, I, this time, I have been lucky to be part of the advanced reader group for this particular series of books by L. J. Rivers. Ruby Morgan is our main character, and she is an absolute treasure to keep re following in her stories. Uh, she has a little inquisitive streak about her, mostly because of what happened to her father, but also because of her journalistic instincts, which she, you'll find her developing as she, we go into the story. She's lost her, she lost her father back in 2012 because of the Magex industry and the harvesters. But I'm not going to go into detail about any of this because this reading will give you a little insight and I think you're going to find a little bit more by reading it on your own. I've been very lucky to be reading these books because I'm very familiar with a lot of the areas that the books are set in, having grown up in England and particularly the London area. So I have a little advantage going into this, a bit of familiarity with the, some of the materials setting. On the other hand, as a reader, I think anyone can pick these up and enjoy them. So without further ado, story time will pick up here in three, two, one. There was a pattern to Craig's movements which made following him easier, and though he was careful, he was not so careful that someone who went looking for him didn't take notice. It made me think he was fairly new at this, which again made him a terrible lead for finding out about Dad. I inhaled the warm air and turned my ruby ring around my finger, picturing Dad's gentle smile. Seven years since that horrible night in 2012, and it was still a picture perfect memory. The ring made me feel closer to him, but his absence was a hole in my heart that I would never be able to mend. If only I could find out the truth, then maybe I could patch myself up enough to live without him. Which was why, these days, I played the part of an aspiring journalist at the local newspaper, Out for Justice. Only I wasn't sure if I was after justice for the people, or mostly for myself. I hoped I was able to do a little of both. A few strands of red blew over my face in the summer breeze, and I gathered my thick hair at the back of my neck, fastening it with a rubber band. The sky was dark with clouds, hiding the sun that was still up somewhere behind them. There was movement in the alley behind the bar. I had counted on Craig to come here, and he had. I can't... I, I crouched behind a hedge across the road from the bar and brought the camera up. As I zoomed in, the shape of him became clearer as he moved closer to the UV lights of the bar sign. The bass from the music reverberated up my legs as the door swung open and a pair of girls stumbled outside arm in arm, steadying one another. I squinted, recognising them. Susan had been in my year at school. She was curvy, medium height, with a pair of legs that made her look taller than she was. Haley, on the other hand, was a year younger, stocky with a button nose and a bright smile. Neither of them were close friends of mine, not that I had any of those, but I knew them well enough. <clears throat> the dealer turned to the girls, his hoodie shading his face, and beckoned with two fingers for them to follow. The girls moved sideways and walked after him into the alley, disappearing from my line of sight. Shoot, I muttered. I needed to catch him in the act, and I had him to get a shot of him getting paid while handing over the drugs. I might be out for my own truth, but I also had a story to write. The words of my editor Logan whispered in the back of my mind. Don't ever let a good story die. As much as I wanted to find out about Dad, I wanted to prove myself and break this story for the Blaken newspaper, a job I was yet to get paid for. I had written a lot of a article. I had written a lot of articles for the Blaken during my internship year, though none as close to my heart as this one. 
Dealing Mag X had become a common thing in the bigger cities, and I wasn't sure Logan would approve of this as breaking news, but I had a feeling I could spin it. And common or not, it was an illegal business which had to be stopped. Things had got increasingly worse since Dad died. The number of deaths by magical blood was at an all-time high, while the numbers of users grew accordingly. It was spreading like a vicious rumour, and now it had come to Cheshire. I dashed across the street and peered around the corner of the alley. There were four iron sconces mounted on the brick walls. One was broken, the next two shed a dim light, and the last one was flickering, ready to give out. It was enough light to get a decent shot, however, so I raised my camera again, my finger resting on the shutter button as I zoomed back in on Craig and the two girls. I snapped pictures without pause, making sure I didn't miss anything. The girls were giggling, and Susan brought out a pile of cash from her oversized bag. Craig accepted the cash and handed her something in return. It was hard to tell what it was, though it was an easy guess. I tried zooming in on what I assumed to be blood panels, hoping it would show up clear enough in at least a picture or two. If, Lu if Logan wasn't such a cheapskate, he would have agreed to spend a few extra quid on a new camera, or at least a better lens. The camera was okay for beginners, but far from the best for its kind of work. Craig tilted his head at the girls and pulled his hood further down, then turned to walk off. I spun backwards, flung the camera strap over my head and tucked the camera into my backpack. With, strip, with quick steps, I joined the line outside the bar. Crap, what was I hiding? I wanted to question him, but how? My magic powers were purely defensive, nothing that would intimidate Craig. And if I did manage to get hold of him long enough to ask him anything, then what? I wasn't going to torture the guy, at, and at some point, I would have to let him go. By that time, he would know what I was. Stupid Vu. My pulse quickened as Craig crossed the line to the shade and uh, passed the line to the shade and crossed the street. He wasn't looking my way though, as he was busy shielding his face and getting out of there. Once I could no longer see him, I slipped out of the line again and returned to the alley. I walked straight down the cobbled alleyway to find the girls leaning against the brick wall at the end. They were laughing as Susan slid the pieces of a panel apart, her tongue hanging out. Hey, I said, you shouldn't do that. Well, if it isn't Miss Goody Two Shoes Morgan, snapped Haley. Who are you to judge? It's dangerous, I called, stepping closer. Susan waved one hand at me. Go away, Ruby. We're having some, some fun. It could kill you. So could a car. Just living a little. In fact, Susan tilted her head at me. Why don't you try one? I've got several interesting samples. How about you try yourself some blood for, uh, for invisibility? There's no such thing, I mumbled. Haley snickered. She's not having my superpower, that's for sure. I wanted to scream at them, but took a deep breath instead and tried my best to compose myself. My dad died from Magex, so no, I don't want it. I don't want you to lick that blood either. The girl stared at me like I was some from, dif from some different planet. Then Susan lifted the panel and gave it a slow lick. She wiped her tongue and shrugged. So what if you, uh, what happened to your dad sucks, but he overdosed? We're just having a small taste, is all. Yeah, just a taste, Haley agreed. Then she licked a panel as well. I trembled, unable to speak. Before I had time to consider my actions, I hurled myself forwards and grabbed Susan's bag, tossing out the contents. Six panels lay among the makeup, Susan's phone and a pack of chewing gum. I stepped on the panels as hard as I could, a wave of satisfaction washing over me, as they crunched and broke beneath my feet. And that is only the start of what's happening here. I think you're going to enjoy what happens next, and I want you to discover that for yourselves, because Magex is a big and powerful threat to the world of Ruby Morgan and her family. More so, in fact, it's a dangerous threat to the mortals, who seem to enjoy the powers that it will give them. So... If you've enjoyed this reading, check out my show notes below. I'm going to give you links to this book, the dates of the special uh, pricing promotion that's going to be happening from the 24th to the 28th of April 2020. To you, those of you coming to this recording afterwards, I'm sorry, um, but I think you'll enjoy the book anyway, and it is definitely well worth paying full price for. I'll also link to the author's books, so that you can pick up the rest of the series 
But more importantly, I'm also going to link to my review of this book so that you can see what I really thought of it and why I think it's worth five stars. So this has been Storytime from Timothy Bateson. We've come to you through difficult times. So stay safe, stay healthy, and do whatever you need to do to stay that way.